Apple charges between two and a half and three and a half times as much for RAM than third party suppliers do. Fortunately, there are a few Macs like the Mac Pro and this lovely new 2020 iMac that have their RAM slots user accessible. Today, I'll be showing you how easy it is to upgrade your RAM on the iMac and help you save literally thousands of dollars depending on your RAM capacity needs. Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Tim Stolars, and I'm the proud new owner of this new completely specced out 2020 iMac. Completely specced out minus the RAM that is because I chose to keep the base eight gigabyte RAM configuration and upgrade the RAM myself, saving myself a whopping $380 US for 32 gigabytes of RAM by purchasing through a third party on Amazon. If I needed 128 gigabytes, it would have cost me just over $685 through the same retailer, while Apple wants to charge you $2,600. That is an insane amount of coin, and there's absolutely no consequences for doing this yourself. It's the same type of RAM, and it does not void your warranty. I've included links below in the description to the RAM I purchased on Amazon. So now that you know you can buy your own RAM and save a ton of money, let me show you how quick and easy it is to do it yourself. Items you will need to complete this upgrade consist of microfiber cloth or a towel and a dull pointed object to press a small button. I personally chose a mechanical pencil. To start, turn off your computer and unplug it. Then gently place it face down on its screen so you can access the backside. This is the RAM door and this is the button you need to press to open it. A firm press will make the door release so you can remove it. Inside you will see these two tabs. Press them outwards and lightly pull up. Now this is where you have a few options depending on how much RAM you chose to buy. Option one is to take these two four gigabyte RAM sticks out that came in the base configuration and replace them with two fresh ones that you purchased or fill up the whole thing with four new ones. If you are only putting two sticks in, just note of which slots you are removing the base sticks from and put your new sticks in the same slots. It does matter where they go and it's slot one at the top, two, three, and four at the bottom. As you can see, the base configuration is slot two and four. Option two is to take two fresh sticks and put them in the RAM slots that are not occupied. This is slots one and three. If you purchase anything besides four gigabytes of RAM sticks, then you're gonna be mixing your RAM capacities. And this will work, but your RAM speeds drop from 2667 megahertz to 2133 megahertz, as shown here. I see online that if you reconfigure the RAM sticks that came with the base model and put them in slots one and two, and then put the ones you purchased in three and four, you can get your RAM speed back to 2267 megahertz with the eight additional gigabytes of RAM. Do not do this. Even though system information states you're back to full speed, in practice, running Geekbench tests show you get about half the performance. So to summarize, it seems like you get the best performance if you only use two or four RAM sticks of the exact same capacity. If you need to mix a match to get that extra capacity, make sure you slot the RAM in dim pairs. This will give you a reduction in speed, however. Once you've decided on your configuration, you want to pull out the base sticks with two hands. Sometimes they need a little bit of force. Take note of where the notch is on the RAM. To line it up properly, you want the notch to be on the left side. When I did this earlier while I was shooting that stop motion clip, I was clearly distracted with trying to get the right shots and I mixed up the orientation and I was definitely pushing on the RAM a little more aggressively than I should have and not understanding why it wouldn't seat itself. They might need a little bit of force, but you should be able to tell pretty quick if you have it backwards. Once the RAM is in, push the tabs inwards and the whole cage back inside. Line the RAM door up and push that back in as well. I notice this does take some force and it sounds a little scratchy, which isn't a great sound to hear when you're playing around with such an expensive machine. Plug your computer back in and turn it on. You will notice that boot up takes a little bit more time than usual, but this is normal. Once you're logged in, press on the About My iMac in the top left corner and find the Memory tab. You should see your new RAM capacities here. Hi, Editor Tim here. 
I shot this a little while ago and since then I actually upgraded my RAM even further with an additional 32 gigabytes for a total of 64 gigabytes of RAM. I did some tests on an 8, 32 and 64 gigabyte RAM setup and I learned a few things that might be worth checking out. I made a separate video on that linked here and in the description below. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. I really appreciate you spending this time with me and I hope I was able to demonstrate how easy it is to complete this RAM upgrade yourself and save a pretty penny in the process. If you enjoyed this video or found this information useful, it'd be great if you could leave a like and a comment below. Let me know if you changed your RAM yourself recently, are doing it while watching this video, or thankfully found this video right before you're about to pull the trigger on a new custom Mac with the RAM upgraded by Apple. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.